Hello friends, in this session we are going to discuss a very important concept of digital electronics which also overlaps with the concept uh, or a topic in computer architecture and organization which is registers. So we are going to discuss the concept of memory registers and how they help in storing data. So the first and the major use of registers or the basic use of registers is to store a group of data bits. So let's imagine if I want to give the analogy of a register, I can assume it in the form of a collection of pages, right? So if we take a recap, we also know that flip-flops are used to store one bit, one bit of data. So if I want to store one bit of data, I'll use one flip-flop for it. So uh, if I give an analogy, I would say, if I have one single page or one sheet I would say I have a blank sheet and I'm storing one bit of data. I take this blank sheet equivalent to a flip-flop, right? So now this blank sheet represents a flip-flop. So if I want to store one bit, I'm saying I can write only one bit of data on this blank sheet. That is either I can write one or on the same blank sheet I could write zero, right? So I can either write one or I can write zero, but I can write only one bit. Then I would say that a flip-flop can only store one bit of data and now this one bit basically is stored in this flip-flop, right? So over here, if I say I have two flip-flops, flip-flop flip -flop one, which is storing one, and flip-flop two, which is storing zero currently. So I have two flip-flops to store two bits, right? And one bit clearly we know has two combinations, one and zero. So, as you all know, as we have just discussed, that a flip-flop stores one bit of data, but essentially, we do not have only one bit of data in our memory. We need multiple bits of data, or we, we can say a huge sequence of data is fed into uh, the machine or your computer as a machine instruction, right? Every machine instruction basically comprises of a huge sequence of data bits. So, in order to store do, uh, that data bits or in order to store your data in the form of binary, what you need is you need a combination of such flip-flops, right? If I say that my data string, my data string is 1011. So, now this data string is only comprised of four bits, right? So that means if I take the same analogy, I'll be needing four blank sheets for representing it. And let's say if I want to represent the same data, I'll be keeping it somewhat like this, right? So similarly, the same thing happens in a memory. If I want to store the same data, I'll be storing the same data bits in the form of flip-flops, which will be arranged in a certain manner. Right, so one flip-flop basically corresponds to your this one page which stores one data bit. So one flip-flop stores one data bit and now what will we do to store these multiple data bits? We will take multiple flip-flops for these, right? This will be flip-flop 1, this will be flip-flop 2, fp3, fp4. And now what do we call this combination of flip-flops? We call this combination of flip-flops as a register. So this is a very simple method or a simple analogy to learn the concept of a register. So a register is nothing but it is a combination of multiple flip-flops. Right. So, registers are just a combination of flip-flops attached with each other. Essentially, in order to track these data bits in the certain order in which they exist to represent this data string, I'll have to attach them. I cannot attach this with this because that would link the data or form the data in a different manner. So, they are, I, they are attached like this. Now we'll uh, move into the details and we'll get to know how the registers are attached to each other and how they form 
a series of you know classification so that essentially depends upon that essentially depends upon the input they are fed into how the input is entered into that register and the manner in which the registers are connected in which form do we need to take the output and so on so there are a lot of details into it and we'll move into the details one by one i won't uh, cluster all the things together so let's go into the things step by step first of all what we are clear with right now is that for storing n bit of data i'll be needing n flip flops and the manner in which the flip flops are attached with each other the input is fed into them and the output is fetched from them defines the various types of registers this will cover in the further details when we'll get to know about the registers and the usage as per now is for storage and to calculate arithmetic or logical operations now how they calculate these how they store the data bits how they differ on the basis of these factors that we'll see in the next session so see you all in the next session and uh, get uh, please stay tuned with the series because you'll be watching on various important concepts and learning the concept of registers like you have never learned before thank you in case you have any doubts please post them in the comment section below thank you